welcome to lesson 15 on design for driving. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing passing. Passing is defined as a lane change out and a lane change back. And Linda is going to spend a little bit of time with us on some of the steps in passing. Linda? Okay, you remember when we talked about lane changes that we did go through seven steps for a safe lane change. Let's review those seven steps again. Number one, you want to check the path ahead. Number two, you want to check your mirrors. Number three, you want to signal. Number four, you need to check your mirrors again. Number five, you need to take that quick over-the-shoulder glance to check your blind spot area. And number six, you want to glide over, make it a nice smooth glide. And the last thing you want to remember to do is to cancel your signal. Now, let's take a look at each of these steps and an actual example here. We're going to pass a vehicle. Okay, let's say we're starting back behind the red car. And for some reason, maybe the red car is slowing down and we want to pass it uh, for some particular reason. Okay, we're behind the red car. At this point, we have to check our path ahead to determine if we have enough room to actually pass this vehicle. So we're concerned for our lane as well as the lane in which we want to use for passing. So we check the path ahead. Once we decide it's clear, then we need to check our mirrors to see what's happening behind us. Then we need to signal, and in this case, we're moving to the left, so we're going to signal left. If we were moving to the right, of course, we would signal right. At that point, after we signal, remember again, people will do different things uh, once they see your signal. It could be somebody will see your signal and they may uh, decide to speed up or they may decide to slow down and let you in. Okay, but remember, people will do different things. So at that point, after you signal, you must check your mirrors again. You want to take that quick over-the-shoulder glance. Once you decide it's clear, then you want to glide over into the lane. And of course, you would be passing this car. You must make sure you can see that vehicle, the red car that you just passed, in your rearview mirror before you decide to move back over. You are canceling your signal at this point. Now, we are in the other lane. Now we want to make a lane change back. So again, we're using our same lane change procedure. We're going to check the path ahead, uh, check our mirrors. Of course, if we can see the other vehicle, then we're ready to move back over. We need to signal, check our mirrors again, look over our shoulder, and then glide into the lane. Okay? Uh, and then again, remembering to cancel our signal. So it should be a nice, smooth procedure. Remember, it's a lane change out, and then a lane change back in. Okay, so these are our steps for passing. Again, as Howard told you in the definition, it's a lane change out and a lane change back. Okay, Howard, can you tell us about some places uh, where you cannot pass to the left? Sure, Linda. There are four basic areas in which we are not permitted to pass another vehicle. Uh, let's start out with uh, the first, and that is when we are approaching a curve. Now, notice in this particular diagram, we have the yellow vehicle ha is starting to pass the white vehicle. And we also have a vehicle coming in the, in, from the opposite direction in this particular lane. Now, the problem is, of course, that this vehicle, the yellow vehicle, is not able to see the white vehicle. Have you noticed anything about this particular diagram? One thing you might notice, of course, is that we have two solid lines. And whenever we have two solid lines, of course, it indicates no passing. So this vehicle should have never made an attempt to pass in the very beginning. And of course, even if passing were allowed, shouldn't have passed anyways because he would not have seen the white vehicle coming on. 
This point here is a point where impact would take place if the yellow vehicle continued passing and the white vehicle continued on in a straight line. Now, let's take a look at a second area in which uh, passing is not permitted, and that is approaching the crest of a hill. Now, again, in approaching the crest of a hill, you may not and probably will not see a vehicle coming over the hill. That is, assuming there is a vehicle. There may not be a vehicle, but we always must predict the worst. And if we have predicted the worst, we would have predicted the fact that a vehicle was coming from the opposite, uh, from the, over the hill. Now, notice he has given his signal to change lanes. He is starting to pass, but he certainly hasn't seen the vehicle coming over the hill at this point. Again, have you, do you notice anything? Notice that there is a solid line on our side which indicates no passing. The broken line on the other side indicates that passing is permitted, but that is only after the vehicles coming have crossed over the crest of a hill and have started down. And if you look right here at the top of the diagram, you'll notice that the vehicles going in this direction, once they have crossed over the crest of the hill, they then may start to pass. Now, let's take a look at another area in which passing is not permitted. Passing is not permitted within 100 feet of an intersection where your view is obstructed. And in this particular area, of course, we have an obstruction of the view, the bush sticking out here and the car being hidden by the bush. This vehicle is going to, make an, is going to attempt to make a lane change out and a lane change back to pass the white vehicle is not yet seen the vehicle at this point. He has a signal, as has the driver of the white vehicle. If he were to continue passing and the white vehicle were to, co were to continue making a right turn, this is where the point of impact would be. And again, we should predict the worst. Now this vehicle, even though he may, be, uh, he may the white vehicle may be visible to the yellow vehicle, at this point, the driver may not see the yellow vehicle that is passing. And again, notice that we have a solid line on our side, and that indicates, of course, no passing. Now, we'll take a look at another example, and let's go back to the magnetic board for a moment. And this is a very, very crucial area. This is one area where there are a tremendous number of accidents, not only in our area, but throughout the United States, and that is approaching a railroad grade crossing. We are approaching this railroad grade crossing and notice that the line is broken on our side, which indicates that passing is permitted. Even though passing is permitted, we, were, we have probably been warned previously that a railroad grade crossing is coming up. And one area we never cross at is when we are approaching a railroad grade crossing. Assuming there are no, there is no trains coming, we start to make our, if we were to start to make our pass, and again we have a curve, what about the vehicle coming in the opposite direction? that precipitates a real problem. So another area that we should never make a lane change in is, or attempt to pass, when we are approaching a railroad grade crossing. Now, let's take a look at another example of where we should not pass. We should not pass when we are approaching a bridge, a tunnel, or a viaduct. Let's take a look at this particular example. The yellow car again has given a signal indicating that he's going to pass or make a lane change. He has started to make his lane change. He cannot see at this point if there's any vehicles hidden underneath the bridge and probably due to his obstructed view with the shadows as well as the, the white vehicle, he probably cannot see any vehicles approaching from uh, the other side. So one thing we want to be sure to do is not to um, attempt to pass a vehicle at a bridge tunnel or viaduct. Okay, Howard, we've taken a look at some of the places that are mentioned in the vehicle code where you absolutely cannot pass to the left. Now, let's take a look at some of the more practical places where you cannot pass to the left. This is more or less using our common sense. Number one, we wouldn't want to pass to the left if we had a long line of cars ahead of us. Let's say we were in the back here and there were four or five cars ahead of us. Uh, this would not be a practical place to pass because then we'd have to end up trying to, every time we passed, we'd have to end up trying to go between 
each vehicle, which is not always the easiest thing to do when you're passing. Some people uh, get a little upset when they see what you're doing and you're hopping from space to space. So this would not be a practical place. Another practical place where it would you should really not pass would be if you know up ahead that you are going to stop. There's no sense in passing uh, everybody up when you know you have to stop up ahead. You're gaining what? Maybe one or two cars ahead of you and that's about it. So that's really not smart to pass in that situation. A third place where it would not be practical to pass would be in this situation where we have an oncoming car that is approaching way too close. In other words, if we were behind the red car here, we would not want to pass in this situation mainly because of the oncoming car. It is just way too close for us to pass. Okay, a fourth situation where we would not want to pass would be when the car ahead is going at the speed limit or very near the speed limit. Let's say we're out on the freeway or an open highway. Let's take this situation here. We'll imagine this side of the street is not here. We only have two lanes, okay? We are the vehicle in the very back here, and we want to get ahead of this long line in front of us. Of course, we've already said that we don't want to pass a long line. But let's say this whole long line is already going at 55 miles an hour. It would not be practical for us to pass in that situation. We're already going the speed limit. And you might say, well, I, I just want to get in front of this long line. I don't want to be at the back. Well, remember, the speed limit is 55, and you can be given a ticket, even in a passing situation like this, uh, for going over the speed limit. In fact, a friend of mine, a very close friend, this happened to him, and he was actually only doing like five miles over the speed limit, and the officer rode him up for two miles over the speed limit. So you can be given a ticket for going over the speed limit in a passing situation as well. Now, the last place where you cannot uh, practically pass would be when your sight distance is limited up ahead. Let's say on a curve, as we've already mentioned, or perhaps, again, when you have a long line of cars where your sight distance may be limited. Okay, this would not be a practical place to pass. Now, we've given you a long list of places where you cannot pass legally and practically. Let's take a, a look at a film here that will show us a small car in a passing situation. When passing on the open highway, Kathy learns to spend as little time as possible in the opposing lane of traffic. First, make sure you can see far enough ahead. Since you are in a small car, drop back some distance. Then accelerate before making your move. Gauge yourself so that you reach maximum acceleration as your front bumper comes parallel with his rear bumper. Okay, now it's Rick's turn. Before passing a larger vehicle, be sure to position yourself where the driver of that larger vehicle can see you, because he certainly can't hear you. Your car is shorter and narrower than the average car. Follow too close behind or off to the side, and <laughs> buddy, you're not even on the highway as far as he's concerned. Once you've completed your pass, Remember that big cars tend to follow small cars more closely. So if you find yourself the filling in a big car sandwich, leave more space between you and the car in front. Hi, Linda. Now let's take a look at places where you can pass to the right. And let's for a moment review the seven steps of passing. First of all, you must check the path ahead. Then check your mirrors, signal, Check your mirrors again. Do your over-the-shoulder glance. Glide over. And then cancel your signal. And if you remember nothing else, remember the, you can remember the four most important rules by the word smog. Signal, mirrors, over-the-shoulder glance, and glide over. 
Now, let's take a look at some of the more uh, definite areas where we actually can pass to the right. For example, let us assume that this dr the driver of the green vehicle is about to make a left-hand turn. Now, if there is sufficient area and we do not interrupt the flow of pedestrian traffic, let us assume that pedestrians are crossing in this manner, we do not interrupt the flow of pedestrian traffic, we could pass to the right and then proceed on across the intersection. But again, we do have to make certain that we do not interrupt the flow of pedestrian traffic. Or if somebody is turning right, we have to be very, very careful, either by adjusting our speed or perhaps some sort of other form of communication, honking at them, indicating to them that uh, we are, we are um, proceeding. Now, we, of course, we may have to stop and allow them to proceed. But generally speaking, if the vehicle is proceeding in a straight line, then this vehicle would have to yield the right-of-way to the vehicle that is um, moving in a straight line direction. A second area would be on a highway that is clearly marked for two or more lanes of travel in your direction. Now, I don't have anything of that particular type up here, but let's take a look at it for a moment. We are driving along an interstate highway, and we are in the lane closest to the center divider and we want to pass the vehicle ahead of us, all right, what would we do? We would signal. Well, of course, the first thing we would do is check the path ahead, uh, check our mirrors, signal, check the mirrors again, our over-the-shoulder glance, glide over, and then cancel our signal. And, of course, you always want to make certain of the vehicles coming from behind. Now, there may be a vehicle behind you, and at the same time you start to change lanes, he may also start to change lanes. So this is something to consider. Remember, we always want to predict the worst. A third area that we can pass to the right in is a business or residential district where the pavement is wide enough for two or more, two or more um, lanes or vehicles. For example, let us take this particular area here. Now, we're going, we have parking, horizontal parking spots. So let us assume that we are in this direction and this vehicle is moving straight ahead. What we would do is we would come out, we would uh, check the path ahead, check our mirrors, signal, check our mirrors again, our over-the-shoulder glance, glide over, cancel our signal, proceeding straight ahead. Now this would put us into the slow lane of traffic after we have crossed the intersection. Something to consider here is that we may have a vehicle parked. And if we have a vehicle parked, we have to be certain that uh, we do not interfere with that vehicle, such as uh, by clipping it at the front or perhaps at the rear as we're passing. And remember, in always predicting the worst, you must recognize the fact that the door may open and the driver may throw the door open in your face and step out. This is an extremely dangerous situation. But if there is sufficient room for you to pass, then you may. Now, another area is when it's safe, but never by driving off the paved edge of the roadway. And let's take a look at, um, well, let's take this area here, for example. I, I know it's, it's, uh, we really shouldn't be doing it because of the fact we have a railroad grade crossing. But let us assume that uh, the pavement is wide enough for us to pass. Now, if we come into this area, we're on the, paved, or on, on the unpaved shoulder. And this, of course, in California, is a violation of the vehicle code. If you're going to pass, you're going to have to make certain that you never go off the paved edge of the roadway. So let's move him over just a little bit. Never go off the paved edge of the roadway. Uh, in addition uh, to being a violation, by going off the paved edge of the roadway, we encounter a lot of other problems. One of those being that uh, our right front and right rear, rear wheels would uh, perhaps be into the gravel or perhaps the soft or depressed area. And uh, if we had to apply our brakes quickly, what would be the possibility of uh, not skidding? Well, it would be rather minimal because we have really, um, we don't have the same amount of traction that we would have if all four wheels were on the pavement. A second problem that we encounter is that when we, if we are on the soft or depressed area, when we start to pull back, the right rear wheel might start to throw us into a skid across the paved area. 
And this, of course, uh, in, uh, causes other problems, not only for us, but to the drivers approaching from the rear. We could end up in something that looks like this. The, our vehicle heading in this direction because of the skid, and the oncoming vehicle perhaps being incapable of stopping. Not because he was uh, speeding, but because of the fact that we made a mistake. We made an error in judgment and allowed ourselves to violate the law as well as violate one of the basic rules and that is never 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 allow yourself to be put into a position where you are not able to take corrective action uh, another problem that could occur in this area would be uh, where we um, are pulled off onto the soft or depressed area and we would skid out to the right now the one of the problem one of the basic things that occurs in this area is that we might end up doing something like this we might get the spinning effect because we have a total loss of traction. Okay, now, we're going to take a look at some of the more common pavement markings. And, uh, Linda, you're going to talk to us about that, aren't you? Right. In general, when you want to consider passing, you need to think about the pavement markings in the middle of the road. Let's say you're on a highway. Now, you have to be concerned. Is the line on your side broken or is it solid? If it's a solid double yellow line like this, then of course you absolutely cannot pass. Anytime you have the solid line on your side of the road, you cannot pass. Now, you may have a situation like this where you've got the solid line on your side and a broken line on the opposite side. This means that the person on the other side of the road can pass, and you will have to especially watch out for that person who might be passing on the other side of the road. You may have a third situation where you do have the broken line on your side and the solid line on the opposite side. In this case, you can pass, and the traffic engineers have determined that it is safe to pass in this situation. Okay, so you may have the double solid line, which means no one can pass on either side of the road. You may have the solid line on your side and the broken line on the opposite side, which means people on the opposite side of the road may be passing. Or you may have the broken line on your side and the solid line on the other side of the road, which means you can pass, but the other people on the other side of the road cannot pass. Now, just for a review, let's take a, a look at a quick film here, just to review those pavement markings again for passing. Yellow lines separate cars moving in opposite directions. A broken yellow line means passing's okay if the other lane is clear. But a solid yellow line on your side means dangerous to pass. No, don't try it because you won't be able to see far enough ahead to pass safely. A solid line on the other side of the broken line means you can pass, but cars coming the other way can't. A double yellow line means no passing in either direction. So no matter how urgent your hurry or how slow the car in your way, if you start to pass when you shouldn't, well, I wouldn't. Now it's okay. Pass? Yes. No. Yes. No. 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 Now that we've had an opportunity to look at some of the areas where we can pass and cannot pass, let's take a look at the rules about being passed. For example, we are the red vehicle and the green vehicle wishes to pass us. Now let us for a moment just assume that the railroad grade crossing is not there. As the green vehicle starts to pass us, the one thing we do not want to do is we do not want to speed up. If we speed up and impede this driver's motion and therefore prohibit him from passing us, we are in violation of the vehicle code. Not only are we in violation of the vehicle code, but it certainly doesn't demonstrate uh, courtesy and cooperation to other highway users. A second rule on being passed is you should move to the right. Now, in this particular area, 
we would move to the right as far as possible, but remember, we don't want to go off the paved edge of the roadway. So if we were like this, we would be too far off. Now, we could move to this area here and allow the driver of the green vehicle sufficient distance to pass. This demonstrates a high degree of courtesy and cooperation. And that is our third rule on being passed, is always demonstrating courtesy and cooperation. For example, if, you, if somebody was passing you and you speeded up and you did not allow them to pass, how would you like to be in that same situation? Okay, thank you, Howard. Now, let's do a quick review of our lesson today on passing. We've talked about the steps for passing. Remember, it's a lane change out and a lane change back, and you want to remember especially that smog procedure, signal, mirrors, over-the-shoulder glance, and glide into the lane. We've talked about several places where you cannot pass to the left, and we've talked about a couple places where you can pass to the right, and we've also given you a few hints on what to do if you are being passed. Now, there is also a section in your California Driver's Handbook uh, that talks about passing, so you may want to review this again in your textbook, in your California Driver's Handbook. Okay, what's the activity for this lesson, Howard? Okay, Linda. Uh, first of all, we'd like to have you uh, list six places where you cannot pass another vehicle. And if you've been listening today and have had your paper and pencil handy and have written them down, you'll have no difficulty in uh, performing this part of the activity. We, of course, they want you to include that in your journal. The second part of the activity is we want you to diagram three pavement markings relating to passing, and we want you to label each one of those correctly. And again, if you've been uh, listening carefully and have been t taking notes, then uh, you will probably have no difficulty in uh, performing this portion of the activity. Remember that, uh, as Linda said, you might want to also use your California Driver's Handbook as a reference. So that about concludes the le this lesson, and uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you on our next lesson. Bye. Bye.